It's time to check out five pairs of Nikes that were inspired by the University of Arizona. These shoes are really special to me because I went to the U of A. I actually was lucky enough to go there back in 97 when we won the national championship. Over here is the Miles Simon Sports Illustrated from 97. I've actually been lucky enough to meet Miles Simon because of the Shoeseum. It's been one of the best parts about the Shoeseum has been all of the people that I grew up admiring and now have gotten the opportunity to meet. Miles is one of them. I want to walk you through these five pairs of U of A shoes. Three are dunks, one's a terminator, and another pair is a pair of shocks. Break out this brick right here and we'll go through them one by one. You know we're going to start with the Dunk High Vintage. So this is a 2007 Dunk High Quick Strike, and it's made to look vintage. It was part of Nike Sportswear's Be True to Your School Pack in 07. You're probably familiar with the 2005 Nike SB Be True to Your School Pack, where Nike SB took seven colleges that originally wore dunks back in the day and turned them into Dunk High SBs. For some reason, Nike SB skipped over the U of A. So fortunately in 2007, when the sportswear team did their own version of these vintage Be True dunks, they did make a University of Arizona Wildcats shoe. And actually, I think it's even cooler that there's a vintage one than a skateboarding one because this shoe is so much more like the original dunk worn by U of A Wildcats basketball team. Remember that the dunk was originally a basketball shoe in 1985 and it was made to match collegiate uniforms. So of course, that's why you've got the navy blue on the upper of this shoe. But look at the white part. It's actually sort of ivory, sort of yellow. We've got these yellowed midsoles. The outsoles look like they've got some wear on there. And then look at the toe, the creasing right here. These shoes really do look vintage, like they're from the 80s. Great material, great leather, just like they were using back in the 80s. Check out this detail though. On the inner collar, it says size 11, and then the production date, 850901. This is something that was common on Nike shoes in the 70s and the 80s, and I love that the sportswear team paid attention to that little detail on these shoes. I wanna show you a detail that I think they missed though, and it's actually kind of funny. We'll check out the box right here. Nike Dunk High QK Vintage. They were abbreviating Quick Strike with a QK for a while before they figured out that QS was probably better. But kind of funny, I mean, who would even think to abbreviate Quick Strike with a QK? Anyway, back to these beautiful Dunk High vintage shoes. You really don't see a lot from that 2007 Be True pack, and I'm really glad to have this pair right here. We'll work our way to the next pair of Dunks, which is actually pivotal in the evolution of the Dunk. This pair of University of Arizona colored 1999 Dunk Low COJPs was only released in Japan. That's what the COJP means. Now, Dunks originally were basketball shoes in the 80s. In the late 90s, Nike brought them back in lows and highs, and they were worn casually, and then eventually people started skateboarding in them. They then made Dunk Lows, Dunk Low Pro Bs, and then Dunk SBs in 2002. But these 1999 Dunks are sort of a snapshot in that middle era between the Dunk as a basketball shoe and then the Dunk becoming a skateboarding shoe. Very, very cool. And then, you know, of course, I love the University of Arizona colors. A lot of people actually consider vintage Nikes, Nikes before 2000. So in some people's eyes, these are considered vintage because they're from 1999. I would say, no, not really. The real vintage dunks are the ones from 1985. That being said, I wanna show you another really special feature about this pair of shoes. I wanna grab the right shoe to show you. Check out that hang tag right there that says 555. This pair of shoes belongs to DJ AM, and all of his shoes in his collection were numbered when his sister auctioned them off on eBay. You can see the certificate of authenticity says 555 down here, matching up with the hang tag. If Adam's shoes did not have a box, as these didn't, they would come with a hang tag and the number on that hang tag matched up with the certificate. So not only are these a pivotal shoe in the evolution of the dunk, not only are they U of A inspired, but they were also Adam Goldstein's. And then of course they were on display in the shoe museum. 
Very special pair of Dunks right there. I want to show you another pair from 2010 of Dunk Lowe's. These ones are also made to look vintage. I bought these for 28 bucks at the Camarillo Nike factory store, and they were part of a four pack of Dunk Lowe's made to look vintage. I actually found all four of them on the same day on the hash wall for 28 bucks at Camarillo. They were $40 and then 30% off, and I scooped them all up, and even though the boxes didn't have tops, I was still just so excited, especially at this U of A inspired shoe. Like the Dunk High, we've got that yellowed midsole right here. Like the Dunk High, the outsole is worn. It's actually significantly more worn on this pair of low tops. Also, the leather upper looks very creased and beat up. Very vintage looking shoe. They did another great job with this pair of low tops. I really, really like them. From these Dunk Lows, I wanna work our way to the Nike Terminator. This pair came out in 2004. They're actually Zoom Terminators and I've got a lot to say about the Nike Terminator. Like the Dunk, it also came out in 1985 originally and was a basketball shoe. It first was worn by the Georgetown Hoyas. So Nike decided that they were gonna make Dunks for a bunch of colleges and the Georgetown Hoyas wanted their own shoe. Like it wasn't enough for them to get their own colored Dunk. They asked Nike for their own shoe. Nike made them Terminators, and the original one said Hoyas going around the back. So like the evolution of the Dunk, where it turned into a skateboarding shoe in 2002 with more padding and Zoom Air, Nike tried to do that with the Terminator here. Now this is not a skate shoe. It's more of a lifestyle sportswear shoe, but it does have a lot in common with Nike SBs. It's got Zoom Air in there. It's got more padding and more cushioning. If you were going to skateboard in a pair of Terminators, you'd probably want to do it in this era Terminator as opposed to the original ones in the 80s. So these came out in 04. Very cool pack of shoes also inspired by four colleges. U of A, Syracuse, Georgetown, and Duke. I scooped these shoes up at the Nike outlets as well and I have a crazy story. So I went to the University of Arizona. I was visiting there. I stopped by the Nike outlet on Ina and La Choya. They didn't really have a whole lot of stuff. At the time, I was living in San Diego. When I drove home to San Diego, I went to my local outlet and they had these Terminators there for $29.99. And I was like, man, why wouldn't they sell these Terminators at the outlet in Tucson? They probably could sell them for full price. Instead, they can't even give them away in San Diego. I bought a few myself. And I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of what's happened at Nike retail. Nowadays, you go to your outlet or your local Nike store, and they have shoes very specific to that geographic region. Sometimes they'll have shirts and apparel as well. It's because of somebody named Gene Jackson. Jean Jackson was the former CEO of Walmart, and she's the president over at Nike now, direct to consumer. So when Nike sells stuff direct to the consumer like you and I, Jean Jackson is at the tippy top of everything. And the success that she had building Walmart, she took over to Nike and they started being very specific about their geographic regions, not just where to open stores, and they've been opening stores left and right, but also what product to send there. And I would say nowadays in this era, 10 or 11 years later, if they were to come out with a shoe just like this and it weren't to sell at Nike.com or at retail, they would probably send it to the Ina and La Choya outlet in Tucson. And they would send the Syracuse shoes all the way to New York, the Georgetown shoes to Washington, D.C., the Duke shoes out to Carolina. They're being much smarter now, whereas before, I remember stumbling upon three of the four of these Terminators at the wrong outlets and thinking, man, they could have really made a lot of money and made a lot of people happy if they sold these shoes in the right places. This pair has a lot of the Arizona details on there. Zona, just like those original Terminators as basketball shoes would have said Hoyas. It says Zona right there. The insoles say National Champs Zona 1997. Incidentally, Mike Bibby broke out the Foam Posit 1 for the first time in 1997. I'm surprised that Nike hasn't made a U of A themed Foam Posit. I'd be all over that. Anyway, from this pair, I want to look at the last pair, Shocks Certified. Pick these up at the Camarillo Nike factory store for $29.99. 
Very, very cool pair of shocks, very specific to the University of Arizona. Of these five shoes, only the last two have had Zona graphics all over the upper and references to the U of A. The first pair of Dunk Highs that we looked at was part of the Be True pack, so it definitely pays homage to the U of A. But it's worth noting that the COJPs from 99, as well as the Vintage Lows from 2010, were not like official U of A collaborations. It's just more that they're Dunks in U of A colors. You've got the University of Arizona A on here. Of course, the colorway is U of A inspired. McHale Center, that's where they play ball. Over here, Wilbur the Wildcat. By the way, in the background here, you see Wilbur the Wildcat and the Arizona Barbie. I picked up all of the toys and props for the Shoeseum at Swap Meets, Flea Markets, Walmart, and eBay. I happened to find these ones at the Swap Meet. I feel like they really bring the shoes to life. Anyway, the Shocks came out in early 2000. The Shocks Certified was one of the original basketball Shocks. There were PEs for players like Jermaine O'Neal, and then of course collegiate PEs just like this one right here. Very cool pair of shoes. Actually, all five of these are very cool pairs of shoes. It's been a great pleasure walking you through the five pairs of shoes inspired by the University of Arizona.